Getter might soon be a goner. Mm. Uh, now, let me give you the details here. Just a couple of weeks after reports that the site was laying off a significant amount of its own staff members, including the head of their cybersecurity, which, hmm, that's probably not a good thing if you're a social media site. Uh, well, it's now being reported that the billionaire backer, uh, a former uh, Chinese citizen, Chinese dissident, uh, uh, Guao Wengui, uh, the backer of Steve Bannon, he funds a lot of Steve Bannon uh, related projects, and the social media site Gitter has filed for bankruptcy, citing over $130 million in fines for unpaid debt. Now, wait a minute. I just said he's a billionaire. So if he's an alleged billionaire, then why, uh, you know, why, why, doesn't he, why doesn't he pay the fine? Hmm, interesting. Uh, so now the details here are hilarious. First, let's go to a court in New York. So now Guo uh, is a fugitive of the Chinese government and vocal critic of, the, of its ruling party. Hey, I, I don't have any problem with that. I think there's massive criticisms of China uh, and their government. But this court, this is a U.S. court, it gave Guo five days to pay a $134 million fine after being found con of contempt of court on February 10th. Now, in a Gitter post on Tuesday, Guo announced that he had, instead of paying the fine, declared bankruptcy and signed the documents on camera. Here's what he said, quote, from this moment on, I am personally bankrupt due to the persecution of the Chinese Communist Party. Huh. Uh, well, okay, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. How are you, how are you the victim of the Chinese Communist Party if you have declared bankruptcy in the United States? I, I don't, I don't quite understand how he's trying to make this connection. Like, I understand that obviously he's not, you know, the Chinese government is not a fan of him. And so that's why he's in the United States, but he's bankrupt in the United States. So here's the details. Turns out he borrowed a bunch of money and didn't pay it back, of course. Now his money troubles stem from a $30 million loan he had taken back from the Hong Kong-based Pacific Alliance Asia Opportunity Fund back in 2008. He did not pay that loan back. Now, uh, well, that's weird. You know, everybody says, that, hey, hey, if you uh, take out a loan, especially when you talk about student loan forgiveness, right? You have all these conservatives that jumped out that jumped on their throat that are like, if you borrow money, you need to pay it back. You got to pay it back if you borrow the money. You have to. You have to. But wait a minute. It, it, you here you have alleged billionaires, wealthy corporations that take out loans all the time and then just don't pay it back and they declare bankruptcy. Now, you can't do that with student loans, thanks to Joseph Robinette Biden uh, and his bankruptcy bill. Very important to point that out, um, making it damn near impossible, if not incredibly difficult, to, you know, declare bankruptcy when it comes to student loans. But these corporations and these alleged billionaires, Donald Trump included, can sit there and take out loans that they can never afford to pay back and then just go, ah, ah bankrupt, sorry, I can't pay it back. <laughs> You're just going to have to let that go. Well, that's exactly what happened here. Uh, and so now, let me get to the fine. So in 2017, there was a lawsuit that was set to reclaim that money. Now, it started off as $30 million. Then you added interest. Now, at the time in 2017, that, was, uh, uh, that interest was about $70 million. Holy crap. Now, his creditors at the time decided to seize his assets, some of them, in order to, you know, uh, sell them and, and, and get back some of the money that he owed. Now, one of them included his $28 million super yacht. Yes, he's got a super yacht. Um, now, 
when they went after his boat, he illegally moved it out of U.S. jurisdiction, even after the court had ordered him, a U.S. court had ordered him to keep it in the United States. As a result, New York State Court Justice Barry Ostriger found Guo to be in contempt of court and fined him $500,000 a day for the yacht, for every day the yacht remained outside of U.S. waters. That's a hilarious. Oh, 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 you're, you're going you're gonna to try to take my boat? Right? We'll try taking it when I'm in international waters, sucker. For the, the loan that I took out and then just refused to pay back. <laughs> Trump behavior. Total Trump behavior. Wow. But no, no, this guy's a victim of the Chinese Communist Party, which again, I have no love for. But the Chinese Communist Party um, loaned him money and expected it to get paid back. All right. Uh, now, that boat, by the way, the, the, the super yacht, the super yacht, I think it's called the Lady K. And there's a fun fact about that boat. Turns out it's the same one that Steve Bannon got arrested on for doing defraud uh, or defrauding investors in the We Build the Wall project. Remember that? Steve Bannon's a literal criminal. Defrauded his own supporters. Oh, yeah, no, we're going to, trust me, just give me all your money and then we're going to build a wall in the southern border. <laughs> Sucker. He got pardoned for that. He got pardoned for that. It, it, it really is amazing how they could just, how they think that they could screw people over. How they can come in and, and take money, borrow money, or just flat out like, oh, steal it. And then think that they can get away with not paying it back. It, it really is amazing. Now, of course, they can rob rich, or I'm sorry, they could rob poor people all day long. And they do. But when it comes to rich people, well, they actually have the power to go and try to take that money back. But anyway, in this situation, so far, you've got a criminal, Steve Bannon, who hangs out apparently with a bum who doesn't even pay back his loans. Yeah, that said, um, oh, I said it was the Lady K. I'm sorry, it's the Lady May. My apologies on that uh, correction. And that's the uh, super yacht, right? So now, Guao, he's now claiming, oh, you know that super yacht that I own? I don't actually own it. It's not mine. Well, whose is it? If it's not yours, then who does it belong to? And, and why, why do you have possession of it? And why were you able to move it out of U.S. jurisdiction? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But by the way, he's, he's actually right. The government of China will now own that boat. Now, he also claims that the multi-million dollar penthouse he has in New York's Upper East Side, well, that's also his. Oh, you can't come and take it because I don't actually own it. Oh, see. Yeah, see, it's, it's somebody else's. Well, again, who owns it then? And where are your assets? Apparently, he claims that he has none. In his filing... Guao says that he owed money to between 50 and 99 people and placed his personal net worth between 50 to $100,000. 50 to $100,000. <laughs> what? Wait a minute here. Wow. Oh, uh, that guy is, well, I mean, alleged billionaire, right? Oh, no, I'm only worth 50 to $100,000. Sure. If you only had that much in, in net worth, how come, for one, you were able to get a $30 million loan back in 2008? Oh, to be fair, okay, it was back in 2008. Maybe you had more money then. Maybe the Chinese Communist Party stole all this money. Maybe that's it. Yes. Uh, or, you know, uh, uh, another question would be, if he only had fifty dollars to $100,000 in net worth, then how come Guao kept financing projects with Steve Bannon? 
and funding social media sites like Vitter. If he doesn't have that much money, then how come he keeps backing these sites? <laughs> I mean, this is absolutely what a ridiculous, ridiculous excuse. Oh, it's not actually mine. I don't actually own it. I'm not actually even rich. I can't take what you what I don't have. You can't take blood from a stone. Well, then stop acting like you're a billionaire if you're not really a billionaire. No, no, he's hiding his money. That's what he's doing. He's hiding his money because he doesn't want he doesn't want to pay back his loans. He wants to be a you know, he wants to be a bum. He want like Donald Trump and just keep all of his money. That's what he wants to do. Now, what this means, of course, for Gitter, which is run by uh, Jason Miller uh, and is very pro-Trump, even though Donald Trump refuses to get on it. Uh, well, it does not mean good things. Pretty sure it's about to implode. Look, I, I said it before when I talked about this. There's just no money in right wing fringe right wing social media sites that are just made about politics. Look, it's hard enough to build a normal social media site that caters to everybody, right? We've already got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, we've got YouTube, we've got TikTok, we've got all the rest that I can't name off the top of my head, okay? Um, we have all of those choices. Why would anyone go to a place that panders to a tiny slice of the population? None of these companies, by the way, none of these companies, um, they're set up, they're not really set up to be political, right, in nature. When it comes to the things that are shared on Twitter and Facebook and all that, the majority is not news and politics. It's like cat videos. <laughs> and, and I love cat videos. I think those are great. It, it, that's, that's more of a part of Facebook, for example, than anything on news and politics. That's a very small chunk of the content on these platforms. And so, I mean, when you're making a site to cater to just only politics, and not, not just only politics, but only right-wing politics, then you're not gonna experience a huge potential for growth into the future. You're cutting a lot of people out, a lot of potential people that use your site. The only way that social media sites actually survive is to get enough people to sign up and then to bring in advertisers. Or in the case of Facebook, to collect your data and sell it to third parties. Let's be honest about that. All these social media sites take your personal information and they sell it off to third parties. They sell it off to advertisers, etc. cetera. Uh, and so Gitter, it, it ain't big enough for that. Of course, they. you think that Getter wouldn't sell your information? Of course they would. 100%. 100%. But then there's the other thing, too. As one of you pointed out in the chat, here comes True Social, right? So that's the other reason that I said that these sites are going to fail. Because you have so many of these so-called alternative sites that are, again, to the right wing, that only pander to the right wing, that only want the right wing there. And then, and of course, what you're gonna get is a lot of Nazis, because that's usually invariably what always happens to these so-called free speech sites, which are generally not even free speech because they ban people like Nick Fuentes. Um, I mean, you're only gonna get a small group of people and they're fighting uh, you know, the, the, these sites are fighting for that small group of people, which divides it up even further. There's no growth potential at all, at all. And so, no, it's gone. Getter, about to be a goner. It's only a matter of time. Tick tock, tick tock. We'll see how long it lasts now.